On your mark, get set, save that puck. Celebrate the wins with us, as you're not going to want to pass this show by. Coach O always hype before a game. Bring the noise. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. Yeah, and there's no emotion out of that man, Coach O. <laughs> always, always love doing a game with the guys because he's always so pumped up before a contest. Well, it's an emotional time it of is. year. I, we're getting right to the end of uh, the hockey schedules, yep. basketball. Uh, has uh, a month left, uh, but every game becomes that much more intense the further you get into your schedule. Oh yeah, it's, I mean it's coming down to uh, to really spots for seeds in the in the section. Well, we start with the boys' hockey team. They went into last Thursday's game looking for their fourth straight win, but it would be tough facing off against Elk River. The Cardinals have dominated lesser teams this season, but they have struggled against the quality clubs. This was an opportunity for them to show they can rise to the challenge and take care of business against another good team. Elks lead their section and they controlled much of the first period, but Will Wagner comes up with a huge save on their leading scorer right there. There's no score after one. Take another look from up top. Cole Mears thinks he has an easy goal, but Wagner reaches back and just denies him. That's top 10 right there. Mears would eventually start the scoring in the second with a delayed penalty on the cards. Great passing. Mears leaves no doubt this time. Elks on the scoreboard first. But the Cardinals answer with a power play goal less than two minutes later. Tyler Barsness races in, fires it far side top shelf. His team leading 18th of the season ties the game at one. It also sparked the Cardinals offense. Watch this rush. Great hands by Tyson, tries to get it to the back door. Sent to the line. Tandon Bush's shot is tipped up and over. Barzas puts it back out front. Tyson finish it, finishes it as he's going down. Cardinals have a 2-1 lead. They add to it less than a minute later on the rush. Bowden's shot is blocked, but Bresnahan slides it to Caden Alfin at the back door. He puts it into a wide open cage. And while that was enough offense for Wagner, the senior Keeper had one of the best games of his career, made over 50 saves against the Elks. And while that was enough, they get some more. Offense wasn't done. Alfin ties up at center. Engberg pokes it free, goes in two on one. Nolan Hazelwood gets the finish. It's a shorthanded goal. It's 4-1 Cardinals after two. Cardinals special teams were huge. They killed off all six Elk River power plays, and they had another shorthanded tally in the third one. Bresnahan in on the breakaway completes the scoring. Cardinals skate away with a 5-1 to one win. You know, after when I talked to Coach Frock when we, during the game, obviously, um, you know, he, he thought this is a great spot where, where there's no score after first period. We've been totally outplayed. And, and so I really like the, the answer that the Cardinals came back with in, in period number two. They just really dominated and can't say enough about Will Wagner. When this team stays on their toes, yep. they are a very dangerous they team. Are, but they when score. they have gone head to head against those top caliber teams, and they've seen some really, really good teams uh, during yeah. during their schedule, uh, they tend to get back on their heels, and, and they just can't catch up. If they stay on their toes, I really do believe they can compete with just about anybody in the state of Minnesota. On Saturday, or on no, uh, yeah, on Saturday, yep. Hockey Day, Minnesota, they were at Andover for an afternoon tilt with the Huskies. Unfortunately, their win streak comes to an end with a 6-3 loss. Caden Alfin, a goal and an assist. Bowden and Bresnahan had the other goals. And uh, six goals against. That has been kind of the Achilles heel for this team. They have. They can score in, bunch in bunches and bunches, uh, but have struggled defensively throughout, especially, again, against those better teams, those higher, higher quality clubs that get them hemmed into their own defensive end, get them on their heels, um, and they just can't answer as well when they're not forcing the forcing the pace. As much as that, that win was a good win against Elk River, I'm sure it was a disappointing loss to Andover coming back on Saturday. They were riding that game in there, and, and I'm sure that's one that they, uh, that they really wanted. Well, the Huskies are... Are, uh, are definitely a quality club, yeah. but uh, the schedule, the remaining schedule, I should say, is packed with those. The Cardinals are at Gentry Academy on Tuesday, and they will host Holy Angels on Wednesday. Well, the girls' hockey team will close out the regular season this week. Last week, a couple of huge games against conference and section rivals. On Tuesday, the Bluebirds hosted Rogers, looking for a season sweep. The Royals are behind them in the standings, but CPCR won the first meeting by a single goal. 
they were looking to get more of a, of a serious statement this time around. The Bluebirds honoring their seniors and they're taking it all in. One of their last times on the ice at the Forum. And it's one of those seniors starting the scoring. Tessa Bowden's backhander stopped, but Kyla Ketting is there on the doorstep to hammer the rebound home. 1-0 Bluebirds five minutes in. They don't get any insurance and it costs them. The Royals score two goals just 38 seconds apart in the second. Alexa Scherf's wrister from the top of the crease put Rogers on top two to one. Now the Bluebirds, they answer almost immediately. Sidney Bernabek pokes this one to center, gets it right back from Semley, takes it straight to the net for her 18th of the year, and the Royals' lead only lasted 30 seconds. And that sparked the offense for CPCR. Coming up here, Lily McKenzie regroups at center, goes on the attack, one on two. Her first shot is stopped, but she puts the rebound top shelf, puts the Bluebirds back in front. Well, they aren't done in the second. June Semling gets, gets the zone, cuts across. Shot somehow eludes the keeper. Three goals in the last six minutes of the period gave CPCR a 4-2 lead going into the third. Well, they're going to keep the pressure on in the final frame. Caitlin Easton forces a turnover at center. Keating, Keating uh, and Bowden race in on net. Tessa Bowden able to finish it on the backhand. That made it a three-goal lead with just two minutes left. They're going to add one more for good measure. Senior Kelly Ketting with her second multi-goal of the game of the year. Has to fight through some stick checks, but able to put it home. Bluebirds fly away with a 6-2 win. Nice win for them. A absolutely. And, uh, you know, they, this team has been a lot of fun to watch. And, and the great thing is they, they're so talented, but they're still very young. Yep. Yep. Um, but it'll be interesting to see sections right around the corner on Saturday. Uh, their second time facing section leading Centennial Spring Lake Park in the last two weeks. And for the second time, they lose to the, the uh, Panthers by this time by a 4-0 score. Maddie Wasserl did all she could, and actually the Cardinals, uh, the, or the Bluebirds rather, the shots were almost identical, uh, but just not able to find the answer to the Cougars keeper. Uh, upcoming, they have they are at Andover on Tuesday. Always very tough. Uh, yes. The Huskies oh, yeah. uh, have so been good. to the state championship game, what, for the last four years in a row. Yep. They're a pretty quality program, and they will finish at home hosting the YZ Trojans on Saturday. And Howie? We'll be there! All right, the wrestling team has had a great bounce back season, but last week they faced their toughest test of the year. Traveling to Anoka is the tough test of most years, really. The Tornadoes are the perennial power in the conference and the section, and they currently round out the dangerous dozen ranked 12th in the state. Cardinals were forced to forfeit at 107, and they trailed 14-0 after three classes, but David Garcia comes up huge at 127, throws the headlock on Brock Botnell midway through the second period. He's able to squeeze it to the finish, getting the pin in three minutes, 38 seconds. Jack Bridenstine up 11-0 after the first period at 133, an almost immediate takedown to start the second. This is either a pin or a tech fall. Bridenstine uses the headlock to secure the extra point, his pin in two minutes, 51 seconds. Cardinals only get one more win on the mat against Anoka, but it's a dramatic one. Carter Skradsky and Wyatt Rothrum in triple overtime at 160. Watch the bridge coming up from uh, Carter Skradsky. You can tell both are just absolutely gassed. That bridge with already having gone that far is unreal. And then he twists on top in the final second. He does get the takedown just before the buzzer of overtime number three and gets the seven to five decision. Unfortunately, the Tornadoes get to keep the Golden Shoes with a 41 to 21 win. That would have been a heck of a match to, to be there in person to watch. Uh, Skratsky doing a great yeah. job. But just, yeah, I mean, you obviously. Well, both you of mentioned those young men, only a 5 5 score and a triple yeah. overtime, that's. Uh, pretty evenly matched. You could tell just how absolutely oh my, exhausted those them. guys are. Yeah, oh my gosh. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> that was the only event for uh, the wrestling team this past week. And, and kind of interesting note, because of uh, some injuries, some absences, some different things uh, allowed uh, that happened leading into that, uh, allowed David Garcia that opportunity yeah. to get a varsity start. Great. And he gets a pin, so congratulations to him. You bet. Uh, they are at Centennial on Friday this week. They will be in Blaine for the Bengals invite 
on Saturday. Gymnastics team got back to action after a two week uh, rest and they posted their best uh, score of the season so far 115.275 still a ways away from Rogers 136 but nonetheless the numbers going in the right direction Kerfman was their leader on vault with fifth place Barker finished in uh, as the leader in both bars and beam in fifth place Angel Marshall was their leader on floor in sixth place but Barker and Marshall finished third and fourth in the all around gymnastics team is uh, off this week as well they're at maple grove next thursday february 8th and that will round out the regular season well rivalries are one of the greatest things about sports history and added familiarity lead to extra intensity and very few programs are familiar with one another as the swim teams from Blaine and Coon Rapids. The two programs have shared facilities at Northdale Middle School since before any of these competitors were born. So when they had, had to go head to head, there are extra bragging rights on the line. Both team numbers are a little down this year, but both have some top level talent. So it will be tight start from start to finish. The Cardinals top the 200 medley relay team of Connor, Mutel, Courier, sorry, Jackson Ling, and Mitch Tronson. They get the meet started with the first place finish in a time of 152.18. You can see here the Cardinals are going to take third place as well. What a nice, uh, nice race for them. Cardinals are able to build a lead early with a 1-2 finish in the 200 freestyle. Jackson Ling sets the pace in a time of 155.92, and Nolan Schultz takes second, breaking the two-minute mark with a time of 159.27. Well, the Cardinals finished first in nine of 12 events, two first place finishes for Mitch Tronson, and both of his wins are by large margins. He won the 200 individual medley in a time of 211.08, more than eight seconds ahead of second. He won the 500 free by more than 20 seconds. Nice couple of races for him. The divers really know each other well, often practicing together. The Cardinals grab another 1-2 finish in a tight battle. Luke Currier gets the win with a 149.45, and Zach Carter was just six points behind. Cardinals built their lead early, and they maintain it throughout. Another blue ribbon performance. This time, senior Nolan Schultz in the 100 free. He holds off late charge from Weishair to win in a time of 52.08. We're going to move to event 10, the 100 backstroke, and a huge 1-2 finish for the Cardinals. Ben Nephium runs away with it in a time of 106.54, and then Captain Connor Butel is comfortably in second. Cards are up by 15 at that point, and they finish with a 94.5 to 88.5 win. That was fun. That was a, it was. It a good was. And, you know, it was, it was just a, it was a nice atmosphere. It was a lot of fun. You know, we, as we talk about the atmosphere at the pool when those two teams get together you throw out the records because yeah, it's for well, supremacy of the school pool. well and the interesting thing we know obviously we're familiar with the with the boys program and the girls program for that matter and the and the struggles they've had with their numbers over the past few years we're not as familiar with blaine nope. uh but the, in the past years we've seen they still had a full pool deck last year it seemed like they had 40 50 bodies over there not at all the case this year so they are also uh looking for people and interestingly enough anyone uh, middle schoolers, especially, or sixth grade, fifth graders getting ready to go into middle school uh, in the Coon Rapids area, they want you to come out uh, when they host the Blaine Bengals again for the Northwest Suburban Conference crossover on Thursday this week. Yes. That's, that's the first, uh, February 1st, Thursday. They're calling it Youth Night. They're encouraging as many people to come out and see what they do as possible. Uh, they need more people to get involved. It's a great extracurricular activity uh, as I've said many times on the program one of the most inclusive groups uh, that we interact with uh, through our our time here uh, covering Coon Rapids High School well, athletics yeah what a great sport to keep yourself in shape it's something you can do for the rest of your life and and why not do it competitively and and make and make new friends and and have a lot of fun doing it. yeah and I'm sure uh, that goes for for anybody in Blaine if you're yes. uh, considering it come on out see what they do, uh, they'll let you in free, uh, the, and they'll answer questions. I'm sure uh, they would love to have uh, as many you bodies bet. and interested parties as possible for both programs. Uh, throw it out for Titino kids too, because Titino uh, obviously is uh, part of the Coon Rapids program as well. Don't mention that often enough after Correct. they combined a couple of years back. On Thursday, the Cardinals were uh, 
back at it at home, this time against Maple Grove, and this time they come up on the opposite end. The Crimson pretty tough, uh, but the Cardinals still able to get uh, some solid finishes. First place finishes for Schultz in the 200 freestyle, Tronson in the 100 free, and Jackson Ling in the 500 free. Uh, Ling was also second in the 50 free with Connor Butel right behind him. Ben Effium, a solid second place finish in the 100 breaststroke. And the only one of the three relays the Cardinals were able to win was the 200 free relay. Upcoming, as I mentioned, on Thursday, the crossover match in the Northwest Suburban Conference Tournament is the two pool mates, Blaine and Coon Rapids. Uh, they'll be at it on Thursday after, uh, evening starting at 6 o'clock. Go on down. It'll be a good time. Uh, fun event between two very, very closely matched teams. Then they're off for a couple of weeks. Section 7 uh, tournament isn't until the last weekend uh, here in, fe in the last weekend in February. Uh, moving along, North, <laughs> Nordic Ski Team. It was 46 degrees out and sunny today. Yeah, no snow um, left. I, I don't know how much the, or what that effect that had on their uh, conference tournament. Northwest Suburban Conference Tournament was, was taking today. place today uh, down at Theodore Worth. Um, last week, they did have a sprint relay. Uh, both Coon Rapids teams able to get their top relay team uh, through the qualifier and into uh, the finals uh, for the boys that was Albie Ludwig and Lachlan Demmer. Uh, you see, it, their their place went up even though their time was faster uh, in the. Uh, well, I suppose that makes sense. Their yeah. time, it's the it's the uh, wait till you see the girls. Um, uh, both they improved both their time and their place from qualifying to finals from sixth place to fifth place in the finals. Uh, Wing and Hyatt were the second best relay team, finishing in 19th. Uh, you see the rest, Falk and Ryland, Thorin and Bauer, Nagana and Aribe. For the girls, it was Stella Bone and Ruby Demmer, and there it is. Their time got better, their place got worse. From, uh, from qualifying to finals, they were sixth in qualifying, seventh in the finals, despite dropping three more seconds. Uh, the lo I, I love this about this team, though. The Law Sisters and uh, the Fuller Sisters able to team up on sprint relays, Which is great. Uh, finishing 12th and 21st, respectively. But there you see a little just, uh, just some very consistently uh, fast uh, relays throughout. And that's it becomes more important now that uh, uh, the sprint relay has become uh, a part of the section and state meets. So um, the, the hardest part is for those uh, really good skiers that can do any of the disciplines. It's which do you take your shot at come section time. Right. No, nope. I get it. Uh, they have the Northwest Suburban Conference Championship, as I mentioned, uh, is today. Section meet will be next Wednesday, and I believe that's up in at uh, Giants Ridge in Bawabek. Yep. So uh, hopefully uh, they'll have snow, uh, and hopefully they were able to get uh, today's race in. I, I can't say that they didn't, even though I'm sure it was quite slushy and less than ideal conditions. Oh, for sure. I mean, Bring you know, your swimsuit. I mean, well, you look at the at the small amount of snow that was on the ground just on people's lawns. They're sure. they're totally gone. So you can only imagine what it's like there. Well, and they've got it packed. I, I and get. I agree. And, but still, when you're forty then, some the, degrees, yeah, the, the ground the ground's still colder than the air. So well, this is true. That does does help. But yeah, I, I'm it's sure it was, I'm sure it was slushy, uh, and way be way less than ideal. Um, Alpine Ski Team had its final regular season race last week. The boys finished in 10th place. Uh, Derby Bone was their leader in 50th. Simon wasn't far behind in 58th. Denny finished in 66th with Augustin right behind him. And Stroman finished in 68th place. And look at the times, just super, yeah. super close at the bottom of that. Uh, for the girls, uh, obviously only three, three athletes. Uh, sides a very nice 41st place finish, very respectable. Um, and then uh, Kelly was in 68th and Pearson in 77th. They have the section championships coming up next Tuesday. Those are up at Giants Ridge in Bawabic. And should anyone qualify, state tournament will be up there as well. Well, the boys' basketball team started last week hoping to build momentum off their win over Blaine. They hit the road for the first time in two weeks on Tuesday, making the short trip to Spring Lake Park. 
Panthers were a game below 500, but still ahead of the Cardinals in the conference standings. So this was a big one. Panthers pounce on the Cardinals early and start to build a lead. Great look down low right here. Easy basket for Jason Eagle underneath. SLP up 19-8 early. Home team in control midway through the first. Open look for Brock Remy. This three-pointer part of a game-high 28 points. Panthers up 14. Cardinals finally get their offense flying late in the half. Jackson Young with a strong move to the rim. That helps keep the game within reach. Leaders stepping up at a big time. No surprise, Jerry Freeman jumps the lane and he's off to the races, lays it home, and it's a four-point game at the break. Cardinals able to keep it close throughout but never able to get ahead. Jackson Young with a great night, a team-high 25 points. He also grabbed six rebounds and a team-high six assists, including this beauty right here. Draws the defense, dishes to Freeman for the wide-open three. Freeman had 21 against the Panthers. Cardinals still in this one to the very end. Jackson Hetwer hits a three from the top of the key. I made it 78-71 with two minutes to play. Hetwer also had a big night with 17 points, seven boards. But in the end, the Panthers able to pull away. Long pass breaks the press. Andrew King, easy layup. Spring Lake Park holds on for the 84-73 win. Yeah, and a tough loss, I know, for the Cardinals. I know that's one Coach O thought, they, they, even though they're on the road, they had an opportunity to, to win and then gain a little bit of momentum in the, in the conference standings. But, uh, but as we uh, talked it, about it, in it, the it, last couple of weeks, they had this long home stretch, the longest did. home stretch yep. of the season, but at the same time, they were they were facing essentially four of the top five teams in yeah, murderers uh, row. Yeah, in in the conference, and uh, so now you get Blaine, you get a win, you get bumped back up, you yep. go back out on the road. A, a team, like you said, that, you're with right? Them. Yeah, yeah, you're right with them. That one easily could have gone either way. Uh, they really wanted it to go their way. It did not, but. If they had a, had to pick between the two games last week, which one? If they if they knew you could only win one, I think they would have rather won the one at home on Friday Absolutely. because that was against Andover, and they yep. always like to beat the Huskies. And this one was dramatic, right down to the end. Jerry Freeman with the buzzer beater to send the Cardinal fans home happy a 74-73 win. Freeman had 21 points, seven boards, six steals. Uh, he and Jackson Young just do it a little bit of everything every night, uh, putting up great numbers. Jackson Hetworth's numbers over this last five, six games now have really improved, have. Uh, and that's that's huge to have a, a third scorer that's consistently contributing. You know, 15 or better, 14 or better uh, is big for this team. They will host Champlin on Tuesday. And Howie, I think we'll be there. And then they're at Anoka on Thursday. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to uh, talk to Coach O tomorrow and, and kind of get his thoughts going into that game against Champlin because, and again, that's a team that, that they yeah. can beat, especially when they're on their home court. And, you know, I think their record's 10 and 8 overall. So they're, they're just right a little bit ahead of where the Cardinals are at this point in the season, but should be a good one. Well, and, and I obviously I'm a little biased. No. Familiarity leads to, no. to bias. But when this team's playing, much like the boys' hockey team, I think when they play their game, they keep the pace going and they keep their defense tight yep. um, and and keep pressure on the other team, I think they can they can play with, with some of these top teams. Absolutely. At least, a, at least closer than they have in some of the, their losses earlier this year. Obviously, Spring Lake Park, that was a tight game start to finish. It was. Uh, but – you know, uh, turning the tides in those close games uh, could be huge. And they still have, I don't know what it is, eight, ten games left, something like that. Yep. So they go through, uh, through February. So, they do. Uh, this, the rest of the schedule, every game becomes that much more important. Uh, girls basketball team, same couple of matchups last week. They had Spring Lake Park at home on Tuesday, and the Cardinals get the win there. That's a big one for the Lady Birds, 75-72 over the Panthers. Helen Ben continues to impress a 24.7 rebound performance. Jada Gaskins chipped in with 15. Casey Beck had 11, and Kaylin Green was the fourth Double-digit scorer with 10 points, also had a couple of dimes. On Saturday, though, they lose handily to the Andover Huskies, 76-44. Jada Gaskins leading the way with 15 points. Helen Ben 
Uh, that's one of her season lows. Yeah, they held 11, her. They held her down. 11 points. Uh, Andover may have been, didn't see the game, but uh, they may have been on a mission and said, we know we need to stop that young yep, lady. Absolutely. She, uh, she can definitely control a ball game. So the Cardinals now uh, got back to 500 with the win over Spring Lake Park, fell back below. But, uh, you know, for a team that had zero wins, one win last year, yeah. It's, it's eight, eight already, eight already. Impressive, so, and yeah. they've still got again, you know, six, plenty, eight games. Oh well, yeah, plenty, plenty of time, and so they've got a, an opportunity to see if they can continue. Maybe get double-digit wins. Yeah, they are at Champlain Park on Tuesday. They will host an Oak on Thursday. And Howie, we'll be there. Before we go, we want to uh, give a shout out to the uh, team going to the Cheer Showcase. Yes. National send-off. It will be on Tuesday, February 6th from 7.30 to 9 at the CRH Fieldhouse. Come out and uh, cheer on all the uh, teams that will be heading to Nationals. Coon Rapids, Blaine, Andover, Anoka, and Champlain Park cheer teams uh, all headed to Nationals. So uh, congratulations to the Cardinals for sure. Uh, be a fun event. And uh, we will have uh, coverage of that on our YouTube page. Yes. And as we talked about, we got basketball this week and hockey. It's a big week for us here at CTN. Boys against Champlain Park on Tuesday. Girls against Anoka on Thursday. And then girls hockey regular season finale against the y YZ Trojans Saturday night live at 7 o'clock. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howard Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.